today, on your way here, it is very likely that you've walked by some fascinating animals, even without noticing them. I talk about insects and other arthropods. Of course, we notice a fly when it lands on our sandwich, or a bug when it tries to get into a house. But otherwise, we tend to forget about them. Unless we shouldn't. Why? What if I told you that insects have personalities? Well, you might think I'm crazy, but just let me explain. I've always been fascinated by animals, especially arthropods, and I loved to observe them in nature as a kid. And later in life, while I was in high school, one summer I learned that the owner of a local pet store was looking for someone to take care of the old animals in the store no one even wanted to touch. Reptiles, spiders, and insects such as cockroaches. When I got the job, to me, it felt like a dream come true. I could take care of animals I love, observe them, handle them, and even get paid for doing so. I really loved my job, and I spent a lot of time observing the animals, even outside working hours. As time passed by, I noticed something very interesting. The red-eared sliders in the store were highly aggressive, at least some of the individuals. They tried to push away others during feeding time or even bite them. Whereas other turtles were quite shy, they went into hiding and only came out when others already finished feeding. Well, all turtles were females and of approximately the same size, so I really couldn't find an explanation for the behavior I was observing every day. As time passed by, I became more and more fond of tarantulas, so I spent a lot of time observing them in the store as well. And just a little bit time later, I could identify different individuals based on their behavior. For example, one of the tarantulas sat in his web all day, every day, except when it was feeding time, whereas another individual moved a lot around his enclosure. I found this great variation in the behavior of individuals from the same species just fascinating. And I also realized that I can learn a lot about animals just by observing them. That's why I decided that maybe I should keep some at home so I could observe them more. I decided to buy some cockroaches because they are my favorite animals. I absolutely adore them and I just brought an individual with me so I can show you why. The cockroach I brought with me is a Madagascar hissing cockroach. And he got his name from the noise it makes. I think you can see him. He's quite big. And they make this hissing sound to communicate with one another. This is a large male. Females are a little bit smaller. But they can also make this hissing sound. Well, quite often, the males fight with each other. They can be pretty aggressive. But you know, I keep more than just one males at home, and I could observe that some of the males are more aggressive than others. I'd like to do, raise your hand if you own a pet at home, a dog, a cat, a bird, or maybe some fish. Well, I'm pretty sure that you've observed something pretty similar with your own animals, especially if you keep several one of them. I really wanted to understand why is that that they behave these very different ways? I thought to get an answer, I need to become a biologist. I was a third year bachelor student in biology when I came across an article at the university's newspaper. It was about insect personalities. And contrary to what you might think, I wasn't surprised about the idea at all. Based on the experiences I gained at the pet store, I thought that no two animals behave the same way, and to me, animals not having a personality seemed a weird idea. But what got me really excited about this paper was the research methodology it was describing. Because the first time in my life, I read that it is possible to measure the behavior of animals, and by using statistical methods, it can be actually proven that they indeed have personalities. Of course, I wanted to join this research. I wanted to show and prove people how incredible animals insects are. 
In order to do this, I had to abandon the project I was currently working at the time, and I had to change my thesis topic as well. But it was well worth it, because I felt I could find all the answers I was looking for since high school. This was four years ago, and since then, I still do research related to arthropod personality and social behavior. What once was just a simple pastime interest became my passion and my profession as well. But you might ask, what do we mean by personality in animals? Well, we can think of the American cockroach as an example. Scientists put these cockroaches into a circular arena with one shelter in it. Some cockroaches took a great risk and explored their surroundings thoroughly, whereas other cockroaches just ran immediately into the shelter and stayed there. So we can say that some cockroaches are bolder than others. Or we can think of the common firebug, the insect species I've studied. In a simple laboratory experiment, we could show that some firebugs are highly social, have many connections with others within the group, as opposed to some other individuals who prefer to be alone. But how do we measure such behaviors? Well, it is very simple. We collected some firebugs and marked them individually, as you can see in the picture. Then we used a labyrinth system, as you can see, and we put all of our individuals within one of the plates. We observed their behavior for 12 hours. And in every 15 minutes, we noted the positions of all of our individuals. Using this data, we could construct social networks, and, con and also we could uh, calculate some network measures just in case we were doing human social networks. And by repeating this experiment two days later, we will also be able to measure the consistency in the behavior of the firebugs. So, with this very simple experiment, we could demonstrate something really exciting. You can see a graph here demonstrating one of our firebug networks. The circles with the numbers demonstrate individuals, and the connection between two individuals is marked by a line. The thickness of the line is proportionate to the frequency of the interactions between those two individuals. As you can see here, the individual marked with number one had very few connections and very f uh, less frequent interactions like compared to the individual with number five. So that's, why, that's the way to measure these behaviors. But what does personality mean exactly? Well, the concept itself isn't new. Scientists have discovered many years ago that when investigating the behavior of certain species, individuals differ from one another. Of course, at first, scientists thought it's just a measurement error or some noise in the data. But in recent years, it became more and more recognized that indeed some species, in the, the individuals, show consistent behavioral differences, meaning that the behavior of individuals doesn't change considerably over time or between different situations. So you might be wondering, why should we care about these things? Why do individual differences matter at all? Let me put it this way. The way an individual behaves shapes the connections it forms and maintains with other individuals. It indirectly influences the behavior of the whole group or the population. Let me think, you can think of a spread of a disease as an example. An individual with many connections, many friends, have a higher chance of spreading a disease compared to a less social one. And now, with this new idea in our mind, we can think of animal populations as a set of unique individuals, as opposed to just a homogeneous mass of animals who behave maybe exactly the same way. And I think by understanding the behavior these really simple animals behave, we might get one step closer to understanding our own complex human behavior. Of course, the behavior of insects and many other animals are very far from our behavior. And by directly comparing insects to humans, we might fall into the trap of anthropomorphizing. 
But I think nonetheless, we shouldn't forget how much we have learned in the past from animal-based experiments. We can think of Pavlov's famous experiments with dogs about learning, or from Fondank's experiments with cats about problem solving. So I truly think that properly implemented cross-species comparisons in the field of personality research might provide us indispensable information in the future. And I also honestly think that by knowing that insects such as cockroaches are just a little bit like us, we might be able to find a tiny bit of admiration for this disliked and even feared species. And I ask you that when you next time see an ant or a beetle crawling around, just keep in mind that what you see is indeed a truly unique individual.